Welcome to this week's episode of The Legal Hodgepodge, where we talk a whole lot about immigration and bankruptcy and a little bit about everything else. I am your host, immigration and bankruptcy attorney, Evelyn Pabon Figueroa. Thank you for joining us. Before we start, I do want to remind you that the information that I provide in this podcast does not constitute legal advice. This week, we will be talking about the Migrant Protections Protocols Program. We will talk about the Florida Homestead Exemption and how someone's immigration status affects it. But first, we will start talking about COVID. For the last two years, COVID has been an ever-present part of our lives, and it has caused a lot of changes. And in response, the government has created a lot of rules So from the very beginning. And once the vaccines came out, the government did what the government does. It created more rules. Some of these rules affected people's employment. Specifically, the federal government created three rules that affected three groups of employees. The first one was requiring that all employees in companies that had more than 100 employees were to be vaccinated. The second one was requiring that healthcare workers were vaccinated. And the third was requiring that federal employees were vaccinated. Of course, the U.S. being the U.S., there were lots of lawsuits challenging all three requirements. Just last month, the Supreme Court issued two decisions on the same day that kind of seem a little bit contradictory to each other. On the one hand, the Supreme Court said that the government cannot require employees in companies with more than 100 employees to be vaccinated. However, the Supreme Court said that the federal government can require healthcare workers to be vaccinated when the institution they work for receives Medicare and Medicaid funding. A third decision last month was the one regarding federal employees. Now, this one was at a lower level because this one is just starting. A district court in Texas told the federal government that they could not require their employees to be vaccinated in order to be employed. So as of today, the way it stands is healthcare workers can be required to be vaccinated, federal employees and employees of companies with more than 100 employees cannot. However, I'm pretty sure this is not the last time that we will hear about this. So here at the Legal Hodgepodge, we will continue to watch these cases and we will let you know what the courts continue to say. Now, moving along, COVID has not just affected employment. COVID has also affected travel and immigration to the US. From the very beginning, we had travel bans because of COVID. The first ones were specific to certain countries that the government felt had more cases of COVID. However, in more recent months, and because of the availability of vaccines, those rules have changed. Now, we don't have bans that are specific to countries. What we have now is a vaccine requirement. Every person traveling into the US has to show that they have been vaccinated. And in some cases, they also have to show that they have a negative COVID test. But it doesn't just stop there. When it comes to our land borders, the government has been using what's called Title 42 of the US Code to stop people from coming into the country. What this does is Title 42 lets the government prevent people from coming in because of the risk of a communicable disease. So because of COVID, what the government has done in our borders, particularly our southern border, 
is tell people that show up to the border, no, 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 we can't let you in. You have to go back to your countries because of COVID. We don't want COVID spread out. Now, this has been criticized a lot. And the reason it's been criticized a lot is because it stops people that are applying from asylum from being able to apply for asylum. These officers, instead of asking people questions to determine whether they qualify for asylum or not, they just tell them, no, we're closed for business. We have to send you back to your home country. The use of Title 42 to keep people out of the U.S. was also challenged in court. Last month, the court heard oral arguments both in favor and against the use of Title 42. Once the court makes a decision here at The Legal Hodgepodge, we will let you know what the decision is. The Legal Hodgepodge. In our last segment, we talked about Title 42 and how people that come to our borders are being sent back to their countries without being given the opportunity to apply for asylum. However, there are a lucky few that they actively request asylum protection in the U.S. And those lucky few are then placed in what is called the Migrant Protections Protocols Program or MPP or Remain in Mexico, how it is commonly referred to. The MPP is a program that was started by the Trump administration. And what this program does is that when people come to our border and they apply for asylum, normally these people, once they pass certain um, interviews, they were allowed to come into the U.S. while they completed their asylum process. Under this new program, these people are sent back to Mexico where they have to wait until their hearing date, then they come the day of the hearing, present themselves at the border, the border agents will take them to the hearing, and then after the hearing, the border agents will take them back to Mexico. Now, there are certain problems with this. For once, these people are not from Mexico. These people are from other countries, and they are being sent back to dangerous areas in Mexico, to areas where they have no support, where they do not know anyone, to areas where they have trouble finding transportation from that place to the border in order to get in time for them to get to their hearing. And a very, very big problem with this is that they have little to no access to immigration attorneys. U.S. immigration attorneys are usually on the U.S. side of the border. They're not on the Mexico side of the border. So it's very difficult for U.S. immigration attorneys to help these individuals prepare their cases in order to show that they qualify for asylum. This program, the Biden administration tried to stop it. When they came in, they disagreed with the program and they started ending the program. Now, again, lawsuits. One of these was filed and a court told the federal government, no, you cannot end this program because you did not follow the rules that you need to follow in order to end this program. So you have to enforce the program. So what the tr so what the Biden administration did was two things. They appealed the decision. So we are waiting on the Supreme Court to decide what they're going to do with that case. But because there's an order from a federal court telling them that they have to enforce this program, they started enforcing the program. So since December of last year, people that come to our border are once again being sent back to Mexico in order for them to complete their asylum process. The Legal Hodgepodge. Now, our last segment of the day is a mix of bankruptcy and immigration. Florida has a very, very, very generous homestead exemption. 
where your home, the place where you live in, is protected from forced sale, except under very limited circumstances. For example, taxes or mechanics liens, or of course, the mortgage that you voluntarily placed on your home. But for the most part, if you file for bankruptcy, you are usually able to retain your property, claim it as your homestead exemption, and the bankruptcy trustee cannot touch that property to pay your unsecured creditors. Now, individuals that are not US citizens or are not lawful permanent residents, in theory, they can file for bankruptcy. There's nothing that prohibits them from doing so. However, they might have an issue with the homestead exemption. Why? Because in order for you to qualify for the homestead exemption, you have to show that you have the permanent intent of this being your permanent home. The keyword is permanent. Someone that is not a lawful permanent resident or of the US or a US citizen cannot have the intent of permanently residing in Florida. Now, courts, bankruptcy courts, and very recently one in the Orlando bankruptcy court, have kind of found a way to get around this. So if the person filing for bankruptcy is a non-US citizen or a non-lawful permanent resident, they will be allowed to claim the homestead exemption if there is another family member living in the house that is a lawful permanent resident, a citizen, or someone that is in the process of obtaining lawful permanent status. So it's very important that someone that is not a US citizen or a lawful permanent resident and is having financial difficulties and they are thinking about bankruptcy, it is very, very important that they talk to a knowledgeable attorney to make sure that they're not gonna lose that very generous and very important homestead exemption. That is all for this week. I really appreciate you joining me and I thank you for that. If you want to reach me, you can send me an email at ipabonfigueroa at cplspa.com or you can call me at 407-874-5490. Again, thank you for joining me and I hope you join me next week. Bye.